I'd like to call this meeting of the Williamsburg James City County School Board to order. Um, before we certify closed session, I'd like everybody in the public to know that Mr. Kelly participated in our closed session um, this evening, and uh, he uh, participated in the motion to go into closed session and indicated his approval of the certification that we are about to uh, take part in his but will be in, uh, in the affirmative. So with that, may I have a motion uh, to certify closed session? Madam Chair, I certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, the Williamsburg James City County School Board, while in closed session, discussed only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements as stated in Virginia law, and that only such public matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed <coughs> meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. I have a second, please. Second. Any discussion? And moved and seconded. Uh, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. That uh, brings us to the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to invite uh, Chelsea Lobos and Lana Peregrin up. Uh, these are um, sixth graders from Norge. Can you guys come up to say the pledge, please? Uh, these are sixth graders from Norge. Chelsea likes to read, and Lana likes pizza. So um, <laughs> we could all rise and uh, allow them to. You guys can actually stand um, there by the microphone. Wanna? <coughs> and whenever you're ready, OK? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We'll see you in a bit. Uh, next, we're going to take the roll. Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Dr. Beers. Here. Ms. Hummel. Here. Ms. Ownby. Here. Mrs. Taylor. Here. Mrs. Young. Here. Ms. Cook. Here. I'd like to note that um, Mr. Kelly, although he was unable to participate in closed session, he's unable to participate in this meeting um, because of the lack of network, jack, network jacks in this building. Uh, so staff worked diligently to resolve this issue, but they were not able to do it. So Mr. Kelly sends his regrets and would otherwise be here. Brings us to approval of the agenda. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I moved um, that we approve the agenda as listed. Second, please. Second. Any discussion? It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Thank you. That brings us to announcements and superintendent's report. Dr. Heron, please. Good evening, Madam Chair. This past Saturday, 901 WJCC students received their high school diplomas. Congratulations to the graduates, to the families, and to the WJCC staff members who supported these students throughout their years in our schools. Best wishes to the class of 2017. I look forward to hearing about your future accomplishments. This evening, I'm pleased to announce that Chris, Christina Berta, the division's chief financial officer, has been elected as secretary to, for the Virginia Association of School Business Officials, VASBO. VASBO is a professional association of K through 12 public school business officials. Uh, VASBO promotes the highest standards of school business practices for its membership through professional development, continuing education, networking, and legislative lobbying. Congratulations, Christina. We're proud of you. And finally, for those who really like to plan ahead, the 2017-18 school year calendar is available on the division's website, wjccschools.org. The first day of school will be September 5th, 2017. Uh, meanwhile, enjoy the summer vacation. These are all of the announcements I have this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Heron. Are there any announcements from board members? Thank you. That brings us to board recognitions. Thank you, Madam Chair. This evening we will recognize the Nord students who won first place in the elementary Rube Goldberg machine contest sponsored by Mad Science. The Nord team competed against 62 teams from the United States and other countries, including the Netherlands and China. 
Their challenge was to build a machine that would apply a band aid. In building their machine, students used skills such as problem solving, teamwork and perseverance, but also had a lot of fun. Students, as your name is called, please come up to be recognized and remain for a group photograph. Hayden Allen. Madison Beecham. Joseph Delaney. Timofey Diakov. Evan Jeffries. Chelsea Lobos. Evan Miller. Brian Murillo. Lana Peregrine. Colin Peters. Isaac Shreves. Joseph Wan. We would also like to acknowledge teachers Anne Beatty and Jamie Collins for their guidance in keeping the students grounded with the philosophy, work smarter, not harder. Teachers, please join the students up front for a group of <laughs> Perhaps we could have the principal and assistant principal join the group as well. I would encourage those who haven't seen the video of the Norge machine on YouTube to go and watch it. It's, it's really incredible. Uh, Madam Chair, this is the only recognition tonight. We look forward to many more wonderful recognitions next school year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Heron. I just have to note that uh, Ms. Hummel yes. and I had the opportunity to watch the machine in action. Um, Sneak preview. Yeah, it was quite amazing. Anyway, so that brings us to citizen comments. Um, Madam Chair, this is the time when citizens who have submitted speaker cards are invited to address the board. Speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their name for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. Each speaker is allocated three minutes. Time cannot be yielded to another speaker. Personnel matters are not discussed in open school board meetings, and we ask that you refrain from making reference to specific individuals. 
The board is interested in hearing all comments fully and requests that citizens refrain from any verbal outbursts, applause, or any other type of demonstration. Although the board does not respond to comments at this time, please know that we are listening and we appreciate your time. Thank you for adhering to these guidelines. Madam Chair, my directions are concluded. Thank you, Ms. Hummel. Mrs. Taylor? We have several speaker cards tonight, so I would like to start with Amy Quark, please. Hello, my name is Amy Quirk. Um, I'm a parent and also a professor at William and & Mary, and I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. Um, the um, I'm aware of the decision to redistrict the schools this year, and um, that these decisions will be coming up soon. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity for us to uh, make our schools the best that they can be for all of our children. And one of the values that I think our community shares is the commitment to diversity. And this value is rooted in an understanding that diversity is good for all of us. Um, I believe that socioeconomic diversity is a value that we really want to prioritize during redistricting. And of course, as a William and Mary professor, I want to emphasize that the research really supports this focus. Um, the research on diversity within schools suggests that lower income kids do better when they're in schools with higher proportions of higher income kids. As for higher income kids, they fare the same whether or not there are some low income kids um, in the school. In addition, more racially diverse uh, schools are associated with smaller te um, test score gaps. And this is not because white students' achievement suffers, but rather because black and Hispanic student achievement improves. And this is due in part to more equitable access to critical resources, including quality facilities, um, highly qualified teachers, private and public funding, and social and cultural capital. So I believe that prioritizing diversity in redistricting is important as it will help to close the achievement gap in our schools and help those kids that don't have the same opportunities as my kids might have. Um, but like many parents, I am self-interested in promoting diverse schools because research so shows that kids like mine, white middle class kids, will also benefit. Um, research um, has demonstrated that students' exposure to peers with different perspectives and different backgrounds um, from themselves must grapple with novel ideas and challenges that improve their cognitive skills, things like problem solving, um, critical thinking, and creativity. These are also skills that are highly desired by employers in the global job market. Um, so this makes prioritizing diversity in our schools a no-brainer. Everyone benefits. Uh, so what does this mean for redistricting? It means that we should draw school um, attendance boundary lines such that the diversity of each school reflects the diversity of Williamsburg and James City County as a whole. Right now, we seem to have an imbalance in the percentage of free and reduced lunch participants across the schools. In 2016, these numbers were 46% at Berkeley, 23% at Tuano, and just 16% at Hornsby. Um, so I think evening out these percentages is, should really be a priority. And let me be clear, making sure that um, every school is diverse is only the first step. My kids will only accrue the full benefits of a diverse school environment if the kids with fewer opportunities are given the resources and support to thrive and contribute meaning meaningfully to the learning environment. Which means after um, redistricting, this also um, means focusing on issues like the hiring of more minority teachers. Um, so in closing, I just want to emphasize, I think that socioeconomic diversity should really be a priority as we move forward with the redistricting um, decisions. Thank, Thank you. you. Harmony Dalgish. Hello, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to address you today. Uh, my name is Harmony Dalglish, and I'm here on behalf of a group of about 12 or so Williamsburg and James City County residents, some of whom have joined me here today. Uh, we've been discussing and meeting as a group over the past couple of months, and we've been discussing school redistricting over the past few weeks. And I would like to share with you two points that have emerged as very important to us. Um, so the first is that I know that if you've not already done so, you'll soon be considering the proposals that were received from consulting firms to assist in the redistricting process. And I would just like to urge you that now is really the time to define our criteria to make sure that our values are communicated to the firm that you choose to assist with redistricting. The school board 
should set specific and clear criteria so that the consulting firm chosen will have guidance to create new districts that will reflect our community values. We feel strongly um, that socioeconomic diversity should be on the top of this list of criteria, which can be achieved by evening out the percentages of free and reduced lunch participants across, our, across all schools. So secondly, transparency and communication are essential. I understand that you won't respond to my questions here, but some of the questions that we have been wondering and discussing is just, what is the timeline for setting these criteria? How will this information be communicated and be shared with the public? And finally, um, what types of public hearings and information gathering sessions, those types of things, are planned at this time? So again, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for your service in making our schools better. Thank you. Wendy Musameshi. Good evening, my name is Wendy Musumechi. I am also um, a resident of James City County. Um, first, I'd like to thank the board for providing us with the opportunity to comment um, at a public hearing. I'm here to sort of um, follow up on um, what was just said regarding communication um, for the redistricting process. Um, in particular, um, we would like to encourage the board to hold two to three public hearings throughout the process so that community members can fully engage and share our thoughts for prioritization of criteria for redistricting. Um, we also ask that to the degree possible information be posted publicly online um, in particular um, items such as the timeline for selecting um, a contractor per the recently closed request for proposal, um, what criteria will be used to select that contractor, any draft reports or recommendations, or um, scheduling of future or pending votes on the redistricting process. Um, we feel it's important that the community be engaged with the board and that we work together um, to ensure the most diverse and rich educational environment for all of the residents of Williamsburg and James City County. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Jennifer Beckham Mendez. She's, she's, oh, oh she's here. <laughs> Good evening. I, um, I'm sorry that I don't have prepared remarks, um, but I did want to um, join uh, my colleagues and, and friends um, who are here this evening to speak about redistricting and just to add my voice to those who um, want to um, let the board know how many of us in the community see diversity as something that we value very much. Um, so that although um, the idea of neighborhood schools is certainly important and appealing, um, I think that it is, as a parent of a son who just graduated from Lafayette High School this weekend and a daughter who is a sophomore, um, we also know that when there are concentrated pockets of students who um, are uh, on free and reduced lunch or, have, um, or um, are from other... Um, facing other economic, social economic hardships, that having them concentrated in one particular school can be a strain on that school. Um, and, um, and so that was one issue. Um, the other issue that I think is very important is to, is to value diversity um, as we do at the College of William and Mary. And I mean, I think in this last year, we've had um, a very successful um, refocusing on diversity and really understanding and um, taking into account the value that diversity adds to an educational environment. Um, and so um, having diverse schools is something that um, I think and many, I believe many other parents in our community feel is very important. So thank you very much. Jennifer Bicca Mendez, I live at 308 Buford Road, I forgot to say that. And um, I have two children at Lafayette High School, well one who's no longer there. <laughs> thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Caitlin Baker. Hello, 
I'm Caitlin Baker. I'm a rising 10th grader at Jamestown High School. And just to start off, I would like to note that I find this board to be extremely competent, and I am very pleased with the majority of your decisions, especially the decision to rename Rawlsbird Elementary School. I also recognize the new budget is a reasonable response to a new financial stimulus, uh, the reduced education budget. That being said, I find that the new budget has resulted in unexpected casualty, which is AP uh, World Language classes. As you all know, the new budget raises the minimum number of students required in a class to 15 instead of the previous six, which resulted in many of these AP classes being canceled, including AP Latin, AP German at both Lafayette and Jamestown High Schools. Uh, and this is problematic because as studies have Excuse me. As studies have shown, studying world languages offers many cognitive benefits to high school students, including building multitasking skills, uh, helping in careers, including especially for Latin in legal and medical fields, and even, I was surprised to find this, holding off mental disorders like dementia and Alzheimer's disease for an, disease for an average of four and a half years. Um, it is also harmful because some students like me really enjoy learning world languages. Unfortunately, these groups for AP Latin and AP German are composed of less than 15 people. Uh, ultimately, I understand that the budget for the upcoming year is binding. I only ask that when composing future budgets and debating about uh, budget choices, you consider AP world languages and the benefits of including them and maybe like throwing a clause protecting them. Thank you so much for your time and your consideration and for upholding this very democratic tradition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kim Hunley, please. It's summer, so you won't be seeing me for two months. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. I even put on my 4th of July stuff getting in uh, the spirit. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever been able to be at Stonehouse on the last day of school. We blow bubbles for the children as they are getting on the buses, and it is just so airy and light and so much fun. So uh, my uh, handsome assistant is over, oh, here. over here, <laughs> <laughs> Scott, has um, some bubbles for each of you. Um, there's a little, um, it's not really a quote, it just says, may you never outgrow bubbles. Um, and that, so today I place a bubble of happiness around you so that nothing negative can get in. So this summer, you know, as you all are um, enjoying some of your vacation, but also having to still um, attend to the, the needs of the system, um, may it all be positive. And um, at the end, I mean, I'll, I'll just um, challenge any of you as you're doing your last remarks, if, if any of the members as you're speaking just lightly does that. You will see you're giggling already. That's what's going to happen. It just there's something about bubbles that brings out the happiness in everybody. So I think on uh, just appease me. But if you wish to do that at the very end, as everybody's giving their closing remarks, fine. And then also when you get into the redistricting, try doing that while you're going over some things and watch how the atmosphere changes. So thank you and I'll see y'all in September. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that, that brings us to the consent agenda. If you'll allow me to read it. Uh, item 7.01, approval of minutes from the following meetings, May 2nd, 2017, May 16, 2017, and June 6, 2017. 7.02, financial report and monthly bills and payroll for May 2017. 7.03, personnel actions as presented this evening. 7.04, revised policy GA, personnel policies goals. 7.05, revise and rename policy GCB, professional staff contracts and compensation plans to GCB, professional staff contracts. Item 7.06, revise and rename policy GCBA, 
professional staff salary schedules to GCBA staff salary schedules. Item 7.07, .07, retire policy GCC slash GCD, professional staffing and recruiting, and replaced with policy GBM and staff hiring procedures. 7.08, .08, retire regulation GCC slash GCD-R, administrative guidelines for policy GCC slash GCD-R, administrative guidelines for policy GCC slash GCD-R, professional staffing and recruiting. Sorry, I just need to do that. <laughs> Item 7.09, revised policy GCDA, conditions of employment. Policy 7.10, revised policy GCI, professional staff assignments and transfers. 7.11, review policy GCPB, resignation of professional staff members. And finally, 7.12, review policy GDPB, resignation of support staff members. May I please have a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, I uh, move that we uh, support the consent agenda as just presented. Thank you. A second. 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 Uh, Mr. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Consent agenda passes. That brings us to action items. Um, item 8.01 is hearing officer appointments. Uh, Dr. Heron, can you please just explain that for the public, please? Yes, Madam Chair. The Educator Fairness Act, which became effective July 1, 2013, produced changes to the Code of Virginia to include a complete right of the grievance procedure statutes. And the change include the provision for grievances to be heard by the school board or a single hearing officer. And this evening we've provided some uh, potential hearing officer appointments for the board for your consideration. Dr. Nancy Catano, Mrs. Nancy Dunn, Ms. Lynn Turner. All appointees are to have some knowledge of public and expertise in public education, and all three uh, recommendations meet those requirements. Are there any questions for Dr. Heron? Oh, I should have asked for a motion first. My apologies. Can I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the hearing officer appointments as presented. Um, can you please, for the record, name the names? I'm not looking at them, Kira. Sorry. Um, you want me to yeah, make the right. motion? Oh, I move that we uh, appoint the following WJCC grievance hearing officers Nancy Catano, Nancy Dunn, and Lynn Turner. Zombie, can I have a second? Second. <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion? Sir, so, so will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. That brings us to item 8.02, federal program grants 2017 and 2018. Can I have a motion, please? I move. I, it's that the school board approve the federal program's grant applications for the 2017-2018 school year. Can I have a second? Second. Sir, is that motion acceptable? Okay, thank you. Any discussion or questions for staff? Okay, with none, can you call the roll, please? Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. That brings us to 8.0 through auth 3 authorization for VHSL membership. I have a motion, please. Madam Chair, I move that we uh, authorize v VHSL membership for Jamestown Lafayette and Warhill High Schools for the 2017 2018 school year. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Second. Um, so we discussed this at the work session. Does anyone have any questions for staff before, or any discussion? Sirza, will you call the roll, please? Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. 
Ms. Cook? Aye. Motion passes. 8.04, 2017-2018 meal price increase. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that, that we approve the meal price increase for school year 2017 to 2018. All right, um, we discussed this again at the work session. Does anyone have any questions for staff or discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Motion passes. Brings us to item 8.05, Child Development Resources Lease Renewal at Lafayette High School. Can I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we renew the lease at Child Development Resources at Lafayette High School. Second? Second. Okay. Um, we discussed this at... Um, our work session and there were some questions and staff has provided some information. Does anyone have any additional comments or questions for staff? The only thing I, I, um, I just was curious if we've had any contact with them since we... Um, yes, the representatives from CDR provided us with the answers to the questions and they were invited to come this evening. Also, Mr. Snipes has provided a timeline for you as well if we were to need to use the 900 billion at some point in time, the timeline's in front of you this evening also. Right. Any other questions? Um, the timeline that was provided is, is very helpful and um, gives us an indication of how many months um, it would take for us to occupy the space if that was something that we determined we would in, in, in fact mm -hmm. need. Um, but what I'd like to also understand as part of this is what are those key um, trigger points? So it would have to go into a CIP, it would have to be approved by this board, it would have to be approved by the Board of Supervisors. And if those elements could be added into this timeline so we could better, best, better understand what, who needs to approve what in order for this to even happen. We, we can have that for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Ms. Ownby? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. And I'd like to note that Ms. Thomas from CDR is in the audience, so thank you for being here. That brings us to 8.06, award a contract for invitation for bid number 17-11422, auxiliary gym edition at Lafayette High School. Uh, can I have a motion, please? I move that uh, the board approve the superintendent's recommendation uh, to award the construction of Lafayette High School Auxiliary Gymnasium to Vertexco for $2,195,400. Second? Second. All right, with, it's been moved and seconded. Um, Dr. Heron, would you like to share any information? Uh, just that this is a, a great moment for Lafayette High School, that the construction of Lafayette Auxiliary Gym is about to start, and uh, we're excited that we are at this point. If you have any additional questions about the process or timeline, Mr. Snipes is ready to address them this evening. Comments or questions? So we're, we're set to open 2018? Correct. That September 2018? Correct. And then we've got all our contingency plans for... Um, all the school practices in the meantime. Yes, I believe so. We'd have to coordinate <laughs> that with Ms. Swinton. Okay. Thank you. No. Sir, is it where you call the roll, please? Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Mrs. Cook. Aye. The motion passes. All right, that brings us to 9.01, board members' comments and requests. Okay, first of all, I want to congratulate Christina Berta for her appointment to her new role on top of her many other difficult job. I admire her very much, and I am sure that they're getting the best end of the deal. 
So I want to congratulate you on that. Um, I also want to congratulate the graduates of Jamestown, Moore Hill, and Lafayette, uh, who graduated this past Saturday. It was a job well done, and uh, as this uh, superintendent Heron mentioned, it was um, largely due to parents um, and the staff and uh, faculty of uh, those schools, as well as the students themselves. And I wish them uh, good luck in their future uh, endeavors, but I want them to dream big, prepare and plan, and learn from both their successes and their failures, because there will be those two. Uh, and I hope that the faculty and staff of WJC schools will relax for a few days uh, before hitting books if they're going back to school this summer or, and uh, before they return to work and have a rewarding and most of all important to have a memorable summer, one that they won't forget. Ms. Ombi? Um, just wanted to piggyback on Ms. Young's comments about the graduation. I thoroughly enjoyed attending all three of the ceremonies and didn't realize that each one is uniquely different. And so it was um, exhilarating to see how each school um, celebrates the accomplishments of all of their students. And so congratulations and to, kudos to those graduates. And um, wanted to say good luck to the students who are gearing up for their summer classes this summer. And so um, lots of students will have fun this summer, but some others are going to get ahead and we'll start working on some classes this summer. Thank you, Ms. Hombe. Dr. Beers? Um, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I also would like to congratulate all the graduates um, from um, our three um, outstanding high schools and also um, wish, the, not just wish the best for them, but um, but also um, thank their uh, teachers and staff in those, in those three high schools for, uh, for helping to make that possible. I would also like to um, thank um, our staff and teachers as we come to the end of, uh, of an academic year. Um, I know many of them will take some time off, but I also many of them will, uh, uh, will have uh, start up second jobs or we'll also start up um, graduate courses um, to continue to improve themselves. Uh, but I, uh, I, I just think it's important to uh, recognize them. And finally, uh, Ms. Christina Berta, I very much congratulate you on being selected as a secretary and uh, in your professional organization. And that, that's, um, that's, a, um, that's really important, and I applaud you for that. Thank you, Dr. Beers. Um, it's going to be a broken record here, but congratulations to all of the high school seniors that just, uh, I was in Ireland, so I was not able to sit up on the stage and, and take pictures for um, my friends so that I could post them on Facebook. So I uh, was looking at everyone's Facebook posts from uh, Dublin a couple days ago, and it was really fun uh, seeing all the Jamestown, Warhill, and Lafayette uh, graduates celebrating all over our town. So it was very uh, congratulations to all of those. Uh, and congratulations to the teachers for making it through another year. Uh, and I'm sure they're at home blowing their own bubbles right now. <laughs> very <laughs> excited to have a few months' well-deserved break. Congratulations once again to uh, Ms. Berta because I don't know whether anyone understands how comfortable the board feels to have our finances in the hands of Ms. Berta. But it's, it's a very comforting thought that um, we can rely on you. So thank you for that. Uh, to, the, to the speakers who came tonight, I want to um, thank all of them for their thoughts on redistricting and uh, especially their thoughts for increasing uh, awareness about the importance of having uh, our schools uh, reflect the nature of our community. And I'm a big proponent of that. And I also see the value in uh, what diversity at all the schools can bring to our students. Thank you, Ms. Hummel. Gonna be a repeat, right? Okay. Um, yes, graduation was awesome this weekend. Light stayed on the whole time, so it was a plus. <laughs> um, we also got to hear a rap from one of our Warhill students. Very much enjoyed that. Um, and also, congratulations to Miss Perda. 
and thank you to our speakers who, who came out to share their viewpoints with us. I always appreciate hearing. Um, on behalf of the custodial staff, thank you for stopping the bubble blowing. I'm sure that <laughs> like soapy over there, you know. Um, I wanted to uh, just reflect for a minute on um, our uh, several board members attended the early college celebration at Warhill and followed by the Pathways end of year uh, project presentation and it was an, an amazing opportunity to look at um, the, our, our freshmen and the, the work that they're doing in this new program and the, and the energy around that but then also our, um, our older students and, and who are working hard to, to get a few college credits uh, under their belt before they, they move on. And, and it was nice to see both ends of the high school spectrum on that day. Also, um, I wanted to comment that I had the uh, distinct honor and pleasure of attending the first annual exceptional games at Jamestown High School, uh, where all three high schools and all three middle schools participated. Um, and it was remarkable. I have to say that I, at that moment, uh, really wish that everybody in the, in the entire community had the opportunity to be there and see those amazing kids and the activities that um, they were participating in and the staff that pulled that together was just remarkable. So I would uh, strongly recommend that anyone who has the opportunity attend next year because it was phenomenal. Um, I uh, also wanted to bring up graduation and congratulate all the graduates, but I also wanted to con congratulate you, Dr. Heron, on your first of what I hope is many uh, graduations and certifications of diplomas. So you got three under your belt this, this, uh, this month. And um, anyway, I hope everybody has a wonderful summer. So is there anything else before we... Uh, uh, thank you all for your comments. Um, that brings us to 10.01 upcoming events. Um, tomorrow on uh, June 21st, the policy committee is meeting. Thank you both for all the work that you do to make our consent agenda so robust. Um, we appreciate it. Um, on July 24th and 25th in uh, the Greater Richmond Convention Center, the Classrooms Not Courtrooms Conference is taking place. It's hosted by the Governor and Mr. Kelly is representing our board and attending that this year. Um, and then on the um, 7th of August, the Virginia School Board Association is uh, hosting a web webinar about communication between Board of Supervisors and school boards and our very own Ruth Larson is um, hosting that uh, session, so um, hopefully some of us can attend that. And are there any other events that you neglected to mention? Okay. Um, that brings us to item 10.02, upcoming meetings. Um, our next meeting is in July, on July 11th. Um, at, uh, it's a work session regular meeting combo because it is our only meeting in July and it'll take place in the annex at James Blair. Uh, in response to the comments we heard tonight, um, that is likely the meeting where we'll hear, uh, be able to uh, learn the results of the RFP that recently closed. Um, I can't speak for when we'll take action on that, but that's when uh, that item will likely be um, on for the first, perhaps the only time, um, but we will have an opportunity to consider that as a board for the first time um, on, in July. So just pay attention to the, the agenda as it comes out. Um, and then on August 1st, we have a closed session at 6 p.m. in the annex, uh, followed by um, uh, a work session, also August 1st, 6.30, also in the annex. So. With that, there's nothing else. We'll adjourn.